Hey guys, Nathan here. So the other day, I got a comment asking me if you could do color grading, but also keep your whites white. Well, let's check it out. White balance is one of those things that I find the more you learn, the more you realize that you can get kind of flexible with that and even your skin tones. And what I mean by that is getting your white balance and skin tones right in the correction part of your grading process is a great starting point. So you have a good reference, but when getting creative and developing a look for whatever you're working on, you can really have fun with it and push the boundaries a little bit. So that's what we'll be talking about in today's video. But before we get into that, be sure to hit the like button and get subscribed for lots more videos like this. I put out two Resolve tutorials a week and we did it. We got to a thousand subscribers, which is absolutely crazy. But anyway, enough of me yammering. Let's get into it. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve 16 and we have a clip from Angel vs. Demon Part 2 by Problematic. Kind of funny, my most viewed music video with the smallest crew. It's just me. Funny how that works out sometimes. Anyway, he's in a white room with a white t-shirt. So we're gonna add kind of a blue green look to it, super simple, and try and get our whites back. So we'll start off by correcting. Now I'm just gonna do this super roughly. We're just gonna pump some contrast into this puppy. And yeah, that's looking not too, too bad. Let's bring up our offset a little bit. Just get it a scooch brighter. Bring up our gain, down our gamma. Yeah, that's setting it not a bad point. Now let's get our white balance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the white balance eyedropper and I just wanna select over top of the shirt. I just wanna look at it. So we can see the red, green, blue values. Now to me, that's telling me that we are low in our blue channel because we have 164 to the other ones are in like the 170s. So things are gonna be a little bit more yellow. And let's just check the back wall here. Yeah, it seems to be that yellow bias as well, which we can definitely see from our waveform. So you see the blue channel is quite low, meaning you're gonna have more yellow. Now there's a couple different ways we could address this. We could go into our temperature slider and make things a little more cold and boom, that gets us right there. We could, however, maybe go into our offset and bring that over. So we have finer control if let's say things are a little green or blue or whatever you wanna do, but it's whatever works for your particular situation and there's no real right answer. I just like to go by whatever gets me a good result on my waveform or whatever works for the particular situation I'm working on. So once you're happy with your result, you're just gonna press Alt S to add a new node and this is gonna be where we're gonna add in a bit of that color for our look. Now I'm gonna do this super simple so it's easy to fix. I'm gonna go into my offset and the way I like to do that is I actually like to use my number keys and I can do that by going into color and pressing printer light hotkeys. I can now control the color. So I'm gonna use four to bring down my red and nine to bring up my blue. And like I said, let's introduce some green into that. So we've definitely achieved kind of a blue green look. And you can see that by our waveform here with our red channel being quite low and our green and blue being a little bit higher. So to actually brighten this up, I'm gonna go into my raw controls and I'm gonna bring up my ISO cause this was shot in black magic raw. Let's go to, let's say 800. Perfect, we'll just do a little bit of adjusting here in our offset. Yeah, that's better. So now this is without the look and this is with the look. Okay, great. Now we're going to add our next node and this is where we're gonna be getting back a little bit of that white. So we're gonna go into our log controls and if you wanna check out why we're doing that, check out my tutorial on balancing shadows. It'll get you all up to speed. So we're gonna go into our highlight and we're just gonna add the opposite of what we added in our offset on the last adjustment. So you can see we took it down a bit. So we're gonna be going up a little bit as we make that adjustment. Perfect you can see it on the waveform. Now, the only parts that we're adjusting are the brighter parts of the image, and we can choose where we want to adjust based on our high range. So let's bring that down a little bit so we're grabbing more of the image. There, you can see things are definitely getting whiter. Perfect, you've definitely grabbed more white, and we can also balance out the shadows if we want to. Let's go ahead and grab that. 
Okay, great. So we can check out our before and our after. And a good way I like to check it through is if we go to the before, use our white balance eyedropper, and I'm just gonna use it to check the values. So it looks like we're particularly low in the red channel, which is exactly what you'd expect based on the adjustment that we made. And if we check the t-shirt, again, we're still seeing it very low in the red channel. Now, if we turn this adjustment back on with control D, then use our white balance eyedropper. Okay, so things are much closer. Let's see here. You know what, that red channel can still go up a bit more if we wanna get actually white again in the back. Uh, no, okay, it's not a matter of the red channel going up, it's adjusting our high range if we want darker parts of our image to be more white, which maybe we don't necessarily want, but that is a relatively simple way of keeping your whites white in a heavily graded image. But my question is, why exactly would you wanna do that? Well, let's look at a couple stills from some movies here. So we're gonna start off with The Matrix, made in 1999. And as you can see here, things are quite green. If we look at our waveform, you can see that green is very dominant in the image. Now, it'll probably be no surprise to you if I, let's say, go in and grab a piece of his skin here, and I go into my highlight, and I check it out on my vector scope, Boom, that sucker is green. So it's not even on the skin line, which is interesting to think about and ties back to what I said in the beginning. Just because your corrections should get you perfectly white and on the skin line, it doesn't mean that your end result has to be perfectly on the skin line or have perfectly white whites. But if we go to another shot of the matrix, check this out. So here's Morpheus in that white room and as you can see, if we go into our waveform, things are much more white. And we can even bring out our eyedropper and see that yes, this is indeed white. So let's go ahead and check out his hand. I'm just gonna grab my pen tool and just make a little triangle of hand here. Okay, perfect. I'm then gonna go into my highlight. And we're gonna go into the vector scope. And as you can see, he's perfectly on the skin line and we have perfectly white whites. I think there's a correlation there because you have to think about it, right? I mean, your skin is only gonna end up on the skin line if it's under perfectly white light. If let's say you point a blue light at someone and their skin is on the skin line, you're gonna have some problems because it's not gonna be bouncing back in the way that you would expect. So white room, perfectly white skin. But there's a couple other examples. Here's a still from Dunkirk. It's character looking up at the sky and in the clouds. And as you can see, this is also quite green and yellow. And if we check out these clouds, let's just grab this white spot here. Let's see what it's coming in at. So as you can see, it is fairly green dominant. If we check out our vector scope, yes, it's showing exactly that. So in real life, clouds don't really typically have much color, however, this is a movie. This is creating its own kind of universe where you can see the world through the filmmakers, the directors, and the colorists' eyes, right? You see what they want you to see. Using that creativity to create a world where the clouds are kind of this yellow, it's totally reasonable. But just for kicks, let's adjust them back to white and see what we see. And I'm just gonna use this little square as a reference in my highlight. I just wanna bring it back to center and that should be white. Now we click out, you can see that one little white patch of cloud and boom, the whole thing. Okay, let's adjust our high range here. Okay, that's, yeah, that's good. So now the clouds are indeed white and that's probably closer to what it looked like on the actual day. I mean, I doubt the sky was actually that blue. There's probably some adjustments made there too. And it probably looked something like this when it was corrected. And then when the look was applied, it ended up looking like this, which kind of created its own world. And that's kind of interesting. So it is easy to get caught up thinking that you have to have perfectly white whites and perfectly balanced skin tones. So 
If those rules can slide, what does that mean about your blacks? So check this out. Here's a still from Blade Runner, a movie that has lots of beautiful color and interesting things going on in it. If we go into our waveform, we can see that the blacks are definitely black. But let's go into another shot. There's another still from Blade Runner. And we got all these crazy lights going on. We got this kind of hologram thing going on. We got this blue light here, this greenish light coming in through here. But again, if you check, let's say this part of the image, it does come in as fairly black, right? Like the values are pretty darn close to each other. So here's my take on this. If you think of white and black, now what pure white is doing is it's bouncing off all colors and what pure black is doing is it is absorbing all colors. Now think of this, let's say you take like a purple light and you shine it on a white surface, you're going to get a shift in that white. However, if it's something that's perfectly black, it's just going to absorb it, right? So that's why your extremely dark parts should be black in an image and your whites, eh, you can have lots of creativity with it. Again, that's just the opinion of a total idiot. I'd like to hear someone much smarter than myself and what they think about it. But anyway, folks, so I hope that helps you out with your color grading and thinking about your white balance and what impact it should or what you want it to have on your final look of your project. Anyway, if you like this video, be sure to hit that button and get subscribed for lots more. And if you dislike it, heck, give it a dislike too. I'd like the feedback either way. Anyway, folks, have yourself a good one. Okay, bye.